Hello everybody, this video is going to be about probably the two top dogs in home media servers and streaming, and that is Plex and Jellyfin. What I'm going to be doing is comparing the two. I've done a similar video just like this, but including MB. The difference is, in this case, I actually have multiple years of experience in both platforms, so this is kind of be more of a informal review of my experiences and the differences, and why personally, I prefer and love Jellyfin, but I'm actually using Plex on a daily basis. And first what I'm gonna do is talk about what both of them do really well, and that is 95% of all the functionality, and that is streaming media. They are both fantastic platforms for this. The services are gonna be able to recognize all the media on your server, they're gonna be able to stream that media. They both have uh, hardware acceleration if needed, but there's a little asterisk there for Plex. And when it comes to setting up and installing both of these services on whatever, whether that be your Windows 11 box, whether that be an actual server unit, your NAS, whatever, the setup process is going to be incredibly simple. Usually it's going to be a couple commands in Linux, or you could do what I do and that's set up actual Docker containers. You can see right here, this is my Unraid. I have a Jellyfin Docker container right here up and running. I just spun this up just a little bit ago to actually do this video and it's really good because no matter what service you use, they both kind of work in the same way when it comes to overall library organization. You could have both services running at the same time, pulling from these same libraries and both of them are gonna do a phenomenal job building the libraries, getting the metadata, putting all the posters, cover art, whatever it is, and actually presenting your media in a very beautiful and organized way. Since Plex is the main thing I'm currently using, I do have it in a separate box. It's over here running on Protainer, right here, in its own independent machine because this little Intel Nook that I have handles all the processes for hardware encoding and streaming media. And like I said, they're pretty similar in the processes of setting up. I do basically both of them with either Docker Compose or Unraid kind of does it for you with templates. Here you can see this is my Docker Compose for Plex. Really simple stuff. And it's virtually the same with Plex. You have your environment variables, your time zone, your permissions here, the actual container. Linux server has a great Docker image for both Plex and Jellyfin. And then you just set up your volumes how you want that to. For this, this is an Intel device, so I just need to feed this through so it can actually use that for hardware encoding. And overall, setting up both of these services is phenomenal. Before I move on, I do need to thank the sponsor, Geek Nook, and their Intel line of Nook machines. On their website, geeknook.com, they also have really high-end Intel machines, such as the Nook 12 Enthusiast Serpent Cannon Barebone for only $9.99. And they have options for 32 or 64 gig and 1 terabyte and 2 terabyte. And this is even $500 cheaper on their website than it currently is on Amazon and Walmart.com. I've done a couple videos on their products overall, they are really great. They try to give you the lowest prices, they have a 3 year warranty, and a no questions asked 30 day return and exchange policy. So if you are interested, make sure you check out the link down below and enter my discount code to save some money. So with that, let's get back into the comparison. Just for a general difference in appearance, this right here is my Jellyfin instance that I just spun up. It automatically pulled everything very well. You can see my latest movies here, latest music, latest shows. And if I open up something such as John Wick 4, Chapter 4, without actually playing the media, this is kind of what we get in terms of uh, the data that we're presented, and it's pretty similar in Plex. In Plex here, if I search for John Wick 4 as well, you could see it pull up right here. And it does look a little bit different, but it's a lot of the same information. We have our cast members you could play. We have some settings, you can rate it. Plex does give you a little bit more in terms of like, here's the tracks, albums. We have related movies on the server and other Keanu Reeves movies. And then for example, if I go over here, I click on edit, we could see all the options I have, tag, sharing, poster, background, all that. If I jump over to Jellyfin, this is what we got going on. And of course you could add themes and all that, so you can make these look different if you'd like to. But if I go over here, it does look a little bit different. We have identify, edit metadata, so a lot of the settings are built into this kind of drop down. But if I click on a meta metadata, for example, or edit metadata, you could see the options we have here. So really when it comes to the organization and user interface and what you get, it's a lot of the same, but with some minor differences, and that just ultimately boils down to your overall taste and preferences. And then that's gonna take us into some of the key differences, and the main one is the proprietary nature of the two pieces of software. Jellyfin is completely free and open source. They don't have any paywalls, no pop-ups or anything weird. Everything is, you just 
you get everything, it's nice. And a lot of those things are premium features that you see on Plex. An example of that is here, this is the Plex Pass website and the features that you get with Plex Pass. I personally have a lifetime membership. I got it on sale, it was like 80 bucks, which compared to completely free and open source is still a bit of money. But you'll notice a lot of these premium features in Plex are already included in Jellyfin. A key example of that is hardware transcoding here. Hardware transcoding is the thing you're gonna to want to use. If you have media streaming to a device that does not support the format, this will transcode it server side so that it can support it on that device. Usually you kind of want to avoid doing this anyway because it takes up unnecessary resources, especially if you could have a lot of the formats at the proper codec or whatever. But if you want to do something such as downscale it to 720p, because you're watching on a mobile device or whatever and you're trying to save data, this is where hardware transcoding really comes in handy. You're gonna need Plex Pass for using this on Plex for Jellyfin, it's already included. And when it comes to the overall setup of hardware transcoding, again, like I said earlier, it's basically the same process. Granted, as you'll see, Jellyfin actually has far more settings when it comes to hardware transcoding. This right here is transcoding options on Plex. You have a couple check checkboxes, you have your directory for transcoding. And then if we head over to Jellyfin, we go over to playback here, hardware acceleration, you actually pick your specific one. For me, like I said, it's Intel QuickSync, and you have all your options, whether your formats and codecs that you actually want to enable hardware transcoding for. And then if we scroll down here, you could see really, you do have a lot more options and a lot more specifics on how you actually want this to work. So if you're real nitpicky on some of this stuff, Jellyfin is definitely a really good option. So basically for a vast majority of people, Jellyfin is going to be perfect for, especially if you're just doing home streaming. And this is where I'm gonna to start to deviate a little bit. I'm gonna talk about some of the benefits of Plex and why I am personally using it for the time being. And this is gonna revolve around the kind of client side applications. Plex has a lot more options. Granted, Jellyfin does have some options and some fantastic options. You can see here, this is the recommended. They have WebOS, Roku, Android TV. So that right there alone is gonna cover probably a majority of people. We have iOS, Android, so mo regular mobile applications, Kodi clients, and if I go over here to all, this is where we get some of the other stuff, which I do believe the Apple TV one is in here somewhere. There it is, SwiftFin, this is the Apple TV one. Now it's in beta, it works pretty good, but you have to do some extra workarounds and sometimes the media streaming crashes and all that, and just it, that doesn't happen on Plex really. The Plex Apple TV app is awesome, and it's just one thing personally for me, I have an Apple TV and a lot of the people that I kind of share my media with use Apple TV, so that is one key thing kind of leaning me into the direction of Plex. This is the Plex website. You can see Apple TV, Chromecast, basically everything is available. Granted, they are, uh, Jellyfin really is not too far behind. They have gaming console apps, home accessories that integrate virtual reality stuff, just a lot more client side integrations. If we go over here to servers, it's basically going to be the same situation. They both are going to work on all NASs. Now, another thing that is a little bit easier with Plex is sharing externally. And this is mostly because I have a some grandparents that like to uh, log into my Plex server, watch some of the media I have on there, and being able just to download the Plex app, sign in with their Gmail or whatever, I add them here, they're in, it just natively shows up. They don't need to manually enter in an IP address or anything like that. I don't need to work as hard to set up like reverse proxies or anything like that. It's just going to work. Which then that comes with a big con with Plex. And one thing that I found quite recently that is rather irritating. Uh, Plex doesn't work very good if your router or your home network is offline. And this can even be in your home. So if I have my NAS running Plex or whatever, my internet is down for whatever reason, it's CenturyLink, it's bound to go down here and there. I get this weird issue where I cannot switch users on Plex home and the media is really just a hit or miss whether or not if it decides to work, which is really strange because it is hosted locally on my home network which again is why I'm probably gonna keep that Jellyfin server I spun up just in case if I run into instances like that. Jellyfin works all the time, locally, no matter what. And then that takes us to another thing where Plex has kind of another slight advantage and that is the option and the uh, amount of third-party tools that are available. An example of that is right here. I'm gonna, uh, Tuli, I think? Which of course it has an error. I recently changed an IP address. Let me fix that real quick. It's actually this one, verify server. There we go. 
I switched out my uh, Intel NUX of a 12th for a 13th gen, slightly better uh, hardware encoding performance. There we go. Boom. This is an example of a third-party application that is available specifically for Plex that does some wonderful statistics. You could send out things like newsletters to the people in your Plex server so they can know what's new, what's been removed, a bunch of different things. You can see here right now uh, the Hopkey fam, which is like the main household account, is uh, streaming The Office at the moment on Apple TV. We get a lot of information. I could stop it if I wanted to be an ass, but we also have some other statistics. So we have play counts. So we have our top plays. So War for the Planet of the Apes is getting a lot of plays. And we go on and we could see all that. Most popular movies. Most watched TV shows, The Office at 95 plays. Big surprise. Yellowstone, Stone, Rick and Morty, Shameless. And Plex has its own kind of statistics tool, but this one is way more in depth and has a lot more features. So like if I go to graphs here, I have our play count by media type, play count by hour of day. So this helps. So if I want to like run server updates automatically, I could set it for 11 PM and that usually does the trick. Platforms, you can see a lot of Android streams. The second most is tvOS, which I talked about earlier. And then we have the most uh, played. And then we have the users who kind of watch the most media and specifically what type of media. Just one third party tool. There's a lot of third party tools you have Things like Overseer here, which is awesome, which I do believe that Jellyfin kind of, somebody forked it and made their own specific version just for Jellyfin, which is magnificent. And a lot of things just integrate. If I go over here to apps on Unraid, and then I just search for Plex, you're gonna see a lot of different things. Plex Media Manager, Plex TV Time, Plex Web, Plex Announcer, Plex Ripper, a bunch of different stuff. Now, if I search for Jellyfin, there is a lot less things going on here. We have a bunch of different Jellyfin clients, a bunch of spins. This is a Jellyfin view, which I don't know what that is. It's worth, something might be worth checking out. Let's just check it out now, shall we? Ooh, this is cool. So we can see the old player versus new player. Nice, that's something we'll, we'll maybe dive into a little further in a separate video. But yeah, those are my primary differences between Jellyfin and Plex. Again, I definitely prefer Jellyfin overall free open source that has no issues with media playback, streaming, hardware transcoding on it is actually my personal preference. But when it comes to actually hosting a server for a bunch of other people, a bunch of people in my family, Plex just seems kind of like the better route. And with the Plex pass, if I add people through that kind of Plex home situation, they get the Plex pass when they're using my server. Also, one thing I really like about Plex is their, uh, media application. I do use that quite a bit and that's kind of a Plex Pass thing. That's like my primary music consumption method at the moment. Really nice. So with that, if you're interested in setting up your very own Jellyfin server, I have a series of tutorials on that and I'm going to be working on a series of serials series of tutorials for Plex if you want to get that spun up and running. The Plex setup tutorial is going to kind of revolve around this Geekom, uh, what is this? Mini Air 11, super cheap Intel machine. I believe it's one or $200. And this right here can run a Plex server just fine. So again, big thank you for Geekon for sponsoring this video. And with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and good bye.